Hiya, thank you so much for clicking on Makeup and Metaphors with me, Anya. Every Sunday I hope to put up a video where I do a makeup look and I talk about the life and times, the context of a famous writer in English literature. I've kind of been starting off with GCSC characters so far. If you saw my video last week on Charles Dickens, well first of all thank you so much for coming back, I haven't scared you away. Um, I'll leave the video link up here in the cards or here, I don't know, sides <laughs> and um, give that a watch or watch it after this, whichever you prefer and hopefully you learn something. This week we're going to be focusing on Robert Louis Stevenson who wrote of course The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. I've been really inspired by the colours used in the cover of the book, you know we've got the dark smoky greens, we've got the black in there and of course I've added glitter because you know glitter. So um, I hope that you learn something, stick with me, learn some context, read books, do makeup looks. Thank you. Hello, welcome back to my actual face beneath the mask of makeup. Hopefully you have just seen a really slayed look um, a few seconds ago where I've edited in the end. Right now I have no idea what I'm going to go with. I'm thinking something that matches the cover of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Um, and there's one thing that we're going to need in this makeup look that's a little bit different and that is sellotape. So starting off with the base while I talk about the beginning of his life. So Robert Louis Stevenson was born in Edinburgh in 1850 on the 13th of November. And if you're into your signs, that would make him a Scorpio. And he was born to his parents who were Thomas and Margaret Stevenson. And throughout his life, unfortunately, Robert was extremely sick. He was a very ill child. And the more research that I do on famous writers, the more it seems that they had quite sickly youths, like very kind of sheltered upbringings because they were so sick. So maybe that's like a, a train of similarity that's between a lot of the writers and poets and things like that that I've seen. So he was a very poorly young boy and he spent a lot of his time sheltered in his house with his parents and their nurse. His parents, um, his dad um, had a really cool job. His dad was a lighthouse engineer, so he designed lighthouses um, and he was hoping that Robert would actually go and keep up the family business, but that wasn't to happen. Sorry to uh, <laughs> spoil the end of that story. And uh, his his father's uh, father was a lighthouse engineer. His uncles were lighthouse engineers. It ran on that side of the family. And then on his mother's side of the family, they were gentry, which means they were kind of upper class. Um, and his grandfather on his mother's side was actually a minister for the Church of Scotland. So he spent uh, holidays with him. And he, so he had a lot of I suppose he had quite a lot of connection to religion because of that. So he had one side of the family where he would get to uh, travel around the place and see lighthouses and all sorts of places in the country, meet all different people. And then the other side of the family, on the maternal side, he would get to go to like churches and hear sermons and see a completely different kind of side of life. So Robert's mum and father um, actually struggled a lot with their chest through, or sorry, his mum and his mum's father, his grandfather, they struggled a lot with their chest and obviously medicine isn't where it is today and they used to just stay inside as a way to kind of protect themselves. In particular, they were very affected by the climate. So when Robert was younger, they would kind of keep him inside during the winter and sometimes they even traveled to warmer climates to try and help out the fact that he was struggling so much with a cough, kind of everything to do with his throat, um, anything to do with like kind of the bronchial tube area, very scientific there, Anya. And um, the damp and the cold really affected them, kind of, I suppose, similar to people with asthma, things like that, but it was very bad. And he was very, very thin growing up because of it, because he was so poorly all the time. But one person who helped him during this time was his nurse or his nanny, whichever way you want to put it. And she was devoutly religious. Now, they were um, Presbyterians, 
Robert Louis Stevenson and his parents. But his parents weren't like Calvinist. They weren't really, really, really strict. So even though they kind of held these religious values, they didn't kind of let it hold Robert back. However, his nurse was, or his nanny was, and she used to read him the Bible. So when he was in bed suffering, can you imagine you've got a high fever, you've got a really sore throat, some kind of chest infection, and then this woman comes in and starts reading you verses from the Bible. He would have like really high fevers while he was reading it too, and this would cause him to have really intense nightmares. And this could be where he gets a lot of the characters for his books. The fact that he had these kind of horrible nightmares and these stories from the Bible mixed with his fevers. And he, he couldn't really tell reality from fiction. And he said later in life that he believed he was nearly two different people while he was having these horrible fevers. Like, I don't know if you've ever had a fever and you've hallucinated and things like that, but he used to call himself, me and that other fellow. And that other fellow was the man that he used to be or the person he used to be when he had these kind of horrible fevers where he would hallucinate and be really angry and really uncomfortable due to all of his illnesses. And of course, if you've read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, that'll sound very, very similar to the two personalities, you know, Dr. Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde, me and that other fellow. So we can see that he maybe had this idea that somebody else came out of him every now and again when he was maybe extremely sick or extremely upset, quite young in life. So obviously Robert missed a lot of school because of his illnesses and he ended up having private tutors at home. He would um, go to school still and have tutors, very well educated young boy. And he went on to do engineering in university, but he found it extremely boring. He wanted to do something a little bit more exciting with his life than what he believed to be boring. College is a time for fun, uni is a time for fun, going out, having fun with your mates, but he spent more time having fun than actually going to the lectures and he would actively avoid them like the plague. Like He really took advantage of that time at university to just make friends. Next I'm going to contour. In 1871 he finally got the courage to tell his parents that he didn't want to be an engineer. He didn't want to do the family business, he didn't want to build lighthouses, he wanted to work as a writer and to his parents that wasn't a real job they weren't too happy about the prospect of their son becoming a writer there was like a bit of a taboo about it they didn't consider it you know proper labor which is funny we'll talk later in his life that actually robert came to this thought when he was much older when he kind of experienced manual labor for the first time and he actually kind of came to agree with them which really fulfills the thought of you know that we become our parents I am contouring my nose a little bit here, so I'm just grabbing the dark shade with my um, angled brush, um, swirling it in it a bit, and then I'm pinching it and just going along the side of my nose. I'm not trying to make it look smaller or anything, but I'm trying to give it space on my face. Otherwise, look at this, fantastic. Otherwise, you're going to end up with really contoured kind of on the outside and then just a blank white nose that takes up no space whatsoever. Some people put like a little line there as well to make them look like they have a button nose. Next then we've got bronzer and blusher. So his parents were disappointed that he had decided to become a writer, but they kind of gave him an out. They said, yeah, okay, we'll let you be a writer, but you gotta have a plan B. You gotta have a backup plan. So they said, if you take the bar exam, the Scottish bar exam, it's called the bar exam everywhere, which is to become a lawyer. So if you take the bar exam and have this kind of backup to be a lawyer, then yes, you can be a writer. So as Robert did this, he never actually practiced law. He never ended up doing it. I'm going to put a bit of highlight now again, a little bit on the tip of my nose, a little bit on the bridge, a little bit on my cupid's bow. And then I put some on my um, eyebrow here on my temple. It's easy for me because I actually have this whole area of my eyebrow shaved off because we were in quarantine and I was losing my mind, quite frankly. And <laughs> it was either that or shave my head. And um, thankfully, I actually have my eyebrows just tattooed on. So it didn't make too much of a difference. So I just shaved off this end so that I could practice drawing them on higher like a drag queen. Looks fantastic, but it's a lot of work to cover the tattoo. So I can just go right through my brow when I'm um, highlighting it. And it just makes it really nicely highlighted when I actually draw the brow on. So I do my temple here. 
Okay, so Robert then kind of moved away from his family. He completely rejected religion and decided that he was atheist. Uh, and this led to quite a long-term dispute with his parents. Like they had accepted the fact he didn't want to be a lighthouse engineer uh, and that he wanted to be a writer. But the fact that he kind of wanted to completely turn his back on their religion and become atheist, that was a step too far for them. Robert travelled around quite a bit in his life, almost to spite the fact that he had been so bedridden as a young child. And he wanted to see the world, he wanted to have that adventure. And this really aided the writing of all of his books. A lot of the different places that he visited are highly reflected in the um, stories that he's written. And then when he was in France, he met his wife, who is called, fantastic name, Fanny de Grift Osborne. And he fell for her, hook, line and sinker. But unfortunately, Fanny, I just can't take that name seriously. She was already married and she had kind of run away from her husband who was being extremely unfaithful, like a serial cheater in America. So she was American and she had gone to France with her daughter to study art. And um, she had run away from her husband, but after a while she decided to give her husband another chance and she moved back to America which left Robert completely heartbroken the poor fellow like he's had quite a hard upbringing he's traveled around the place finally found a woman that he loved and she's married but not only that she's married to somebody who isn't treating her right and Robert felt that he could treat her right so she moved back I believe it was to uh, California so eventually Robert could not stop thinking about her. She had moved back to America, he was British, and you know, transport isn't what it is today. Now you can just hop in a plane, be somewhere in a few hours, but obviously back then going anywhere across country, across sea, across ocean was a massive, massive journey. And she was all the way in California and he was kind of between France and England, just traveling, um, between those two destinations for the for the time that she had gone just after she had gone back to her husband. So it was a big mistake, you know, once a cheater, always a cheater. She went back to her husband and he was the exact same as he had always been. Still fooling around with other women, not taking her seriously. And I believe there was correspondence between herself and Robert. And he decided that he was gonna go over there. He was gonna go over there and kind of win her back in this grand, romantic gesture so i'm going to set my face now mainly because it is really warm in here but um with this revolution spray if you're bougie i'm trying not to itch my nose because in the last video i itched my nose about 10 times i think it's like a nervous tick now and i'm not happy about this so i'm really sorry that i'm itching my nose so much if you're bougie like me get a fan they literally changed my life for setting spray you should check you should do your setting spray kind of in between different phases of your makeup so like after I've done all of the kind of liquid stuff now um, and the powdered down I'm gonna do all my setting spray and then dry it and it'll meld everything together so I'm gonna hit the setting spray and I'm just I'm not just putting on like one spray you absolutely cover your face in it what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use the scotch tape slash sticky tape slash sellotape slash whatever you want to call it and this is a cool little hack, cool little trick. Just, you know, itch my nose again. Um, so you get a little piece, break it off and pop it here on the outside of your eye. Uh, you could do this a few times as well. Just if you if it's really sticky and you're like worried that it's going to hurt your skin. Um, my nose is itchy again. I'm not even joking. Look at that. What are you doing? Stop being so itchy. Okay, so here and then I'm gonna put it just so that it lines up with like my lower eyelid so I'm popping that there and then when I do my eyeshadow that'll keep that line really really rigid so I'm gonna do one eye so that you can see it and then I'll go off camera and do the other eye so I'm gonna or I have been inspired by the cover of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde it has all of the smoky kind of greens and blacks so I'm gonna start off with a really dark green here and I'm gonna hit it right where that, on the edge of where that tape is. And I'm gonna blend it all along my eye. So I'm thinking for this look, just to continue being inspired by the book, is I'm going to use dark green 
all across the lid. I'm going to deepen it up even with like a little bit of black. I'm going to pack on this lovely dark green. I'm really deepening it up in the crease. I'm building, building, building. Again, just like I said in the last video, I'm not starting out with any of these light transition colours. Um, I'm going straight in with these heavy colours right away. And I'm going to use the trick that I did in the last video as well, which is taking a clean makeup brush and just sweeping it around the outside. Again, to show that I am the blending god. And right up there. I'm going to bring it up nice and high. I'm not going to use a liquid liner, I don't think, today. Or if I am, I'm not going to bring it up as high. Because this kind of does the job. When I take this off, we're going to have a really nice, sharp line. And if I use black shadow on that, that'll actually just do the line for me. Right, now I'm going to move on to a darker colour. So I'm going to move on and put like a black on there, just so that it actually looks like I've got a liner. Is there a black in here? There is a black in here. So now I'm using the Jeffree Star Morphe palette. I have a lot of palettes. I'm not going to lie. It's what I spend my money on. It's what um, brings me great happiness. So I'm going to get, I'm just going to use the same blending brush because it's going to be going on there anyway. So I'm going to dip into a little bit of black. This is called Fast Lane. And I'm going to pat it on the very outside of my eye there. So I've got the black. I've brought that right up here. So take your time with your blending like we're not in a rush i'm just gonna hold that down because i um obviously took too much sticky off it on the back of my hand i'm gonna blend that out again i'm always going up so this is what i've got so far so trust the process obviously we're not finished so i'm just gonna take off this tape and look at that lovely clean straight line perfect okay so i'm just gonna do this on the other side and then i'll be right back here we are check it out We've got our nice little line there just from using that tape great technique you can use it obviously with any color so back to the story of robert louis stevenson and his um journey to california so he traveled but it basically broke his health we knew that he was fragile anyway uh, due to all of his chest problems his breathing problems and he ended up going to California in this big romantic gesture and he didn't tell anyone he didn't even tell his parents didn't tell his friends and he ended up getting very very sick and he was nursed back to health along a, like multiple places on his way to California um, and some ranchers finally nursed him back to health when he got there and he met up with them um, with his his love Fanny de Grift Osborne and um he thought it was all worth it. Like finally he was there. She had been ill too, but she had finally come out of her illness. So they had both kind of like come out of these illnesses. They had met each other and it was like everything was worth it. Her divorce was worth it. Her illness was worth it. His travel was worth it. They could finally be together. And then in 1880, they got married. But it was said that he was more fit for a coffin than as a bridegroom uh, because he was just so poorly and she was actually quite a bit older than him as well so i'm going to do a bit of a halo eye where i just put some silver and some glitter right here on the high point of the eyelid itch 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 your face so i'm going to get some silver pop it in the middle just to make the greens really stick out i'm going to use my finger so i've got some silver there from my jeffrey star palette i've shut my eyes and i'm just tapping that right in the middle and i'm gonna just put that right up just above the lid again so that it can be seen when i look forward and i'm just blending side to side after i get a bit of the excess onto the middle and there we go and then i set the exact same with the other eye onto the middle up a bit blend side to side lovely and that's just a little bit of a, a halo spotlight make it a little bit more intense so it should be intense in the middle and then just kind of blend it out you can use just other fingers also, look at these nails. Primark's finest. I did make my own ones last week, but I just wasn't up for it today. I like to change them in quarantine. It keeps me busy, you know, apart from the hours and hours of schoolwork. So I just need to make that slightly more balanced and even. And there we go. We've got a little bit of a highlight or a halo spotlight eye. And now I'm going to do just my eyebrow pencil, some black and make a little bit of a liner. So after himself and the love of his life got married, he developed a new symptom. So he'd always been poorly, he'd always had a cough, he'd always been affected by the cold weather, but uh, Robert started to cough up blood. And obviously that's not particularly a great sign for anyone, is it? But he started to cough up blood 
so they decided to take action and to move somewhere permanently that would be better for his health. So I'm doing this instead of a liquid liner, I'm just lying it across the top lash line and it's usually good for quite soft looks. Obviously this is not soft, I wouldn't wear this to work. I'm just bringing that on the lid, you don't have to be too careful with it either, I'm just darking it. So they eventually moved to Samoa and they moved here after Robert's dad died because he felt he felt really bad moving before that. He didn't want to be too far away, but he moved to the island of Samoa and um, they got a house there and he loved it. They were right at home. He finally felt that the climate was agreeable with his health and that he wouldn't be struggling with the cold, with the damp. And he really like settled into the community there and um, so much so that he became really active with local politics something that he never really considered himself to be interested in he was still writing but not as much as he used to in fact he had kind of taken to doing gardening and like work around the house his wife um she actually wasn't doing too good mentally because all her life she had wanted to be an artist but she just hadn't really been successful at it. And she was dealing with this like pain of not being able to express her creativeness. Her husband had been able to be a writer and I suppose had succeeded in his artistic avenue, but she just hadn't. Like if you remember me saying when she was in France with her daughter, she had wanted to study art, but there was a lot of places that actually didn't accept women as students, which again just shows, you know, 1800s standards right so all i'm going to do now before i'm finished with my look and tell you about the demise of poor robert is i'm going to just bring a little bit of eyeshadow under my eye just to bring it all together i'm going to use this palette here again the morphe i'm going to use a different shade of green just you know go wild um it's called nate oh that didn't age well poor jeffrey and nate are actually broken up now so i'm just gonna bring that under the eye it's a lighter shade of green Something a lot of um, makeup artists do is they use a completely different colour under the eye, which would have been something that I had never done before. But it, it really opens it up and draws attention to it. So completely different shade of green, just under the eye, joining it up there. Uh, so I've done all of that. What was left? Yes, the highlight. So I'm just gonna highlight my brow bone and this inner corner. I'm gonna fix anything that needs fixing and then I'm done. So to finish off, Robert died at the ripe old age of 44, which is really young by today's standards. But again, if you look back through history, people died at a much younger age back then in the Victorian era. And he died of what is believed to be a brain hemorrhage while he was making some mayonnaise with his partner, with his wife in Samoa. And people were devastated. The locals were devastated when they heard he passed and they actually buried him like up on top of a mountain which is supposed to be really hard to get to and people believe it's almost like a bit of an homage to desert island you know uh, like finding him like buried treasure but I, I think it's nice I think it's lovely that he was buried on the final place where he finally felt comfortable you know with all of his illnesses and his ailments where he got to live finally kind of free so um, I hope that you like this makeup look. I hope that you learned something about Robert Louis Stevenson. If you are doing uh, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for the GCSE, enjoy it, okay? It is a really great book and there's some awesome resources online for it and I hope that you enjoy them. Okay, guys, I will see you next Sunday to read some books and serve some makeup looks. See ya!